Hawke's Bay deer farmers Tim Aitken and Richard Hilson are two industry supporters who've told their stories about sustainable land management practices. They've been involved in a series of new short videos released by Landcare Trust. The videos are part of a three-year sustainable farming fund project encouraging greater adoption of environmental best practice on deer farms. Well, I think it's a little bit like a discussion group. It's often good to watch just to see what other people have done. You'll find in there there's going to be something you hadn't thought of or a tree species you haven't tried or a technique for something or, you know, I think uh, there's, there's just there's a wide range of, of options and um, opinions and things. I think you'll, there should be something in there for every deer farmer. I dare say there'll be something in there for sheep and beef farmers as well. This crop is about 10, 10 and a half ton measured. The one that shot at our place was um, shot in the late evening in the late winter, so it's probably not as pretty as it could be. Look, basically, some of the shelter burning, some of the tree species and choices, and the way things were fenced off. Looked at what we've actually we've completed it since then. We fenced off two paddocks either side of one stream, quite a large meandering stream going through our property. So we worked through that one and talked a bit about animal health and a bit about cropping. I think the deer industry is always trying to take a lead. It's a reasonably small industry, so it can be can sort of front foot some of those issues. And I guess it fits with the clean green image that deer have. Um, the wide open spaces, but as a local branch, you know, local Hawke's Bay deer farmers branch, um, we got involved with the Lanky project with Janet Gregory pretty early on when they rolled out the LEP land environmental plan through the beef and lamb. We had quite a good turnout actually. Well, I think it went down really well. The, the, the deer farmers are keen to do the right thing, so they kicked it off, I guess. I guess it's about looking after not just the animals, but you know, the, 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 the whole picture of the land, the, the streams, um, the way you, certain soil types uh, are suitable for certain things, but you know there might be areas you wouldn't want to crop. Uh, there might be areas you want to crop, but you need to do something about it. So plant some trees to stop wind erosion. Um, there might be areas that are too wet that, that are a bit of productive need draining. In a farm sense, do you have they're pretty kind on the environment by and large. They like to move up and down the fence, but you can mitigate that a couple of ways. Make sure they're well fed, so they're more settled. You don't break up your social structure, so you don't keep changing mobs, introducing animals, taking them out. Make sure there's not mobs side by side, because you'll get a lot more fence running when they think they want to be in the next paddock because there's someone else there. And also shelter screening. You know, shelter belts aren't just about protecting animals from the snow and the, and the wind and providing shade. That's it's another aspect for the deer. And I'd have to, you know, you can, on our place, I know for sure that, you know, we've, we've really cut down a lot of the fence pacing just with some, some of the shelter building we've done. We had a bit of a blank canvas when we set the deer farm up, where it's all sheep farm, so we managed to rip half the fences out. We, the regional council gave us a grant for a bit of our shelter building. So we've got some Santor flaxes planted north-south to protect against the westerly and nor'wester, and uh, with crow's nest and Veronese poplars amongst them. Our favourite plantation is actually a bunch of Pittsburgh and Ralphii. We just sort of mass planted them, d didn't really do anything with them. They all took off, we only had to replace a couple and the deer like actually fun enough to eat them, but that's all right because they keep it trimmed. We don't have to pay to get it trimmed. Um, and it, it's a real, it's a good complete barrier. They're quite happy being on the other side. It provides shade on one side and, and shelter, uh, a lot of birds in it. So that's, um, that's probably our, our favorite shelter belt. This is the standing. It's 316 hectares running a breeding finishing operation with deer. So we've got over 600 breeding hinds that are all recorded for our breeding program for First Light Venison. And we also have a Wagyu policy and some cattle policy here as well. To me, sustainability is two things. It's sustainable financially and sustainable long-term environmentally. Lucy and I have always spent a lot of money on this place on sustainable environmental stuff, shelter belts, wetlands, fencing off waterways. We've got a dock block behind us, that's eight hectares that we fenced off when we first got here. So it's just trying to leave the land in a better state than we found it. We supply a lot of high-end consumers in the UK and other areas of the world, and they are very much on the mind that they want to buy um, product from farms that they know they're environmentally sustainable. We have environmental plans that all our farmers do, and I know most deer farmers do in New Zealand whether you're part of First Light Group or anyone else. Customers are more and more educated about what sustainable means 
And we do notice that some of our customers too also understand that to be sustainable, you've got to be financially sustainable. Currently we're dealing with Plan Change 6 for Hawkesbury Regional Council and that means what they're asking for is to clean up the Tuki Tuk River. Frustration I have on this property is the water before Highway 50 is clean, drinkable, nothing wrong with it, but we've still got to fence off all our waterways. And that's going to cost me $300,000 for this farm. But we are in that process of refencing pretty much the whole farm to be able to fence off our waterways to keep the deer out of them. Uh, mainly for your phosphates, which are attached to the sediment. Uh, that's, that's what we're up to. But this dam behind us here is a sediment trap from where I've got a silage pit just up the hill. And the water coming off that and where we put the wastage, whatever you like to call it, it does come down and it, it is built specifically to catch that sediment out of that silage pit. Originally I put that there for myself because I was a bit uncomfortable with what was happening around that silage pit for where I'd just sighted it. Um, there's another dam further up that's also another sediment trap so all the way down it's catching it but you know, we've had customers here that have had a look at it and pretty excited that we are doing things like that on our own accord. It's not part of what they're asking us to do, it's what we do just because just that's what we want to do. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.